it's Chris. And for the first time ever, let me say, what's up, technicians? Because that is what you guys voted to be called. So from this day forward, Daily Tech fans will be called technicians. And that's spelled T-E-K-K, -K, of course. Today's video is all about Mac apps. I've made three previous videos about Mac apps, the first of which just crossed 700,000 views recently. So I'm gonna link them all up down below if you wanna check out the previous episodes. And yes, this is gonna be a long video. Of course, it's full of information that you need, that you want. Now, I don't wanna hear any complaining like, Chris, just get to the point, Chris, why do you talk so long? I put all the timestamps down in the description so you can literally skip around to whatever interests you the most. So go check it out if you wanna do that. And if I hear any complaining, I mean, I'm just gonna make the next video an hour long. I'm gonna start things out today by talking about how I'm using my Mac currently right now, how it fits into my own personal Apple ecosystem. Then I'm gonna mention some of my favorite apps very quickly from previous episodes, just to make sure everybody's all caught up. Then I'm gonna get into my new recommendations today. And if you stick around to the very end, I'm gonna have a surprise for you there. It's very worth it, I promise, no joke. Also, I'm gonna put some of my favorite Mac accessories from mysliceapple.com down in the description too. It's a lot of good stuff to check out. By the way, if I do say so myself, and this is no reflection on me, it's just a reflection on the app developers, but the apps featured in this episode are next level. And I don't just say that lightly, like I mean it. As I was testing this stuff out over the last week, I felt like several of these apps totally transformed and changed the whole Mac experience for me. It was brand new. That's the experience that I wanna share with you guys right now. Some are free, some are paid, but all are lit. Let me first acknowledge today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, technology, and more. So if you're like me and you wanna to continue to fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even your career, then a premium membership might be perfect for you since it lets you join the classes and communities that can make your 2019 a success. I'm interested in so many classes that Skillshare has to offer, and lately I've been digging into one called Storytelling for Leaders, How to Craft Stories That Matter. Skillshare is super affordable at less than $10 per month, so if you wanna join the more than seven million creators already learning online, then hit the link down in the description. And by the way, the first 500 people to sign up using that link are gonna get two months for free. Right now, I'm still using my maxed out 2016 MacBook Pro, and it served me really well. I bought it to be a 4K editing beast, and it has been. But shooting these videos in a two to one aspect ratio, which you guys see, you see it if you're watching on your phone, it's like, why does this fit on my phone so well? Well, two to one. But doing that using settings like optical flow, it does push this Mac, even though it's maxed out back in 2016, kind of to the brink of like what's tolerable, like what I can stand. So it may be time for an upgrade or an eGPU something. So my Mac sits there front and center on my desk because my desk is the place where I edit video. When I'm not at my desk, I'm probably writing on the iPad Pro or something because I like to get a change of scene. So maybe at the coffee shop, maybe at the studio, but Macs in general really aren't my main computers anymore. Like they were for years, but every year I feel like I'm using my iPad Pro more and more. And sometime in the future, I could see myself possibly switching all the way over. But right now, Final Cut is just running things for me and there's some good alternatives, one good alternative, but I'm just not there yet workflow wise. So Final Cut Pro, Mac, on the desk, using it. All right, so just to catch people up at least a little bit, let me mention five apps super quickly that I've already mentioned in some past episodes. Now these are just a few of my favorites. There's a lot more that I've featured, so go ahead and check out those links down in the description if you wanna dive in deep. Thought Train is an app for quickly taking notes, which you can then access immediately. And now it's in its second version. Desk Cover lets you limit distractions by helping you concentrate on just one app at a time. Endurance does one essential thing and it does it really well. It helps you save battery life. Make OS X Great Again fixes three things that drive some Mac owners insane. If you wanna stop iTunes from auto opening, for instance, when you plug in an iOS device, this is for you. Finally, Padbury Clock is the famous minimal clock screensaver I've featured in so many videos that everyone likes to ask about. You've seen it on Instagram, you've seen it on YouTube. If you always wondered, what is this that I'm seeing? How do I get a hold of it? This is it. Now, several of the apps I'm gonna share with you today are not featured in the Mac App Store. That's why you need a video like this in the first place to even help you find them. But that also means you're gonna need some special installation instructions, nothing crazy, 
Uh, but just a few settings you're gonna have to tweak. That's what I'm gonna talk to you about right now. If you try to launch an app that you didn't download in the App Store, you're gonna get a message that tells you it can't run. Something that looks like this. Right after you see that message, I want you to head into the system preferences, head into security, and then you can choose from there to allow that app to run. Just in case that seems confusing, it's not. I'll leave a link down below with some instructions that you can actually follow step by step. Now, I'm gonna leave it up to you also, whether or not you should install any apps that aren't in the App Store on your Mac. Now we can finally get into the current recommendations, the new stuff in this video. And I just have to tell you, this first app is brilliant. If you think about the way that Mac OS lets you organize your apps, it's really more by screens and windows. It's not really built around projects and workflows necessarily, but that's something that Workspace Pro is here to address. The concept is really simple. So you can launch or close a bunch of related Mac OS apps in just one click. So for me, I have a group of apps that I use mostly when I'm writing and a different bucket of apps that I use mostly when I'm editing videos. It's two different workflows. So let's say I'm gonna write. I click on the Workspace Pro icon up in the menu bar. I flick the switch next to writing and then up pops all the apps that I selected that I want to have open when I'm writing. One flick of the switch and all your writing apps pop open right there. Then when I'm done writing, I can hit the icon and deselect writing, which will close that whole bucket of writing apps. And right after that, I can switch into editing mode by flicking the editing switch and launching all my editing apps. Do you see how cool this is? So cool. I can think of a million different uses for this. I mean, you could have a productivity workspace or a planning workspace or a design workspace. The possibilities are endless, literally, because you can create unlimited workspaces. The benefits should be pretty clear here. Save some time and be more productive. So the question is, how well does it work? Well, actually, really well, for me at least. Okay, this next app is great. It's so cool, I can't even believe that it exists almost, but it's one of those things that's so obvious once you've seen it, you're like, oh yeah, that always should have existed. Apple could have done this, except Apple probably didn't wanna use this this way, but I'm just glad that it exists. I finally have a really great use for the touch bar on my MacBook Pro. Pock, yes, you heard that right, lets you display your Mac OS dock in the touch bar. It's that simple. Oh, and to make things better, because somebody's always down in the comments complaining like, oh, I didn't know these would cost. It's totally free and it's open source. So why would you want to put your dock apps in the touch bar? It lets you hide that dock, get it off the screen, and still keep it accessible so you can save space without losing any functionality. What is cooler than that? So you can expand POC to bring up your touch bar dock. <laughs> POC, dock, clock, rock. And there's an always on escape key, which I find very cool on the left. So you don't have to exit POC to get to it. And there's also full badge support too. So you're not going to miss any of your notifications. So if you have lots of dock apps, all you do is scroll around from left to right so that you can see everything. And yet you're still going to be able to get your now playing widget with some media info right at a glance. And you can tap it to play a song, pause a song. You can swipe left or right for the next or previous songs basically everything you need. You can also configure the status widget too. Like if you wanna keep an eye on system info or on time or battery or Wi-Fi stuff, all that stuff is configurable in the app settings. There's some other settings I'm gonna let you explore and play around with all on your own. You don't need me to handhold you all the way through this app, but I will say this is a surprisingly full featured and customizable app to be getting for free. I feel like hiding the actual dog, putting this up in the touch bar, I feel like I'm getting the most out of my Mac right now. Now, if you thought that you already heard some really good tips in this video so far, we're just getting started. On this channel, the tips just keep coming. Now, I wanna be very serious right now. This next app that I'm about to tell you about has really, truly, seriously had an impact mentally on me and my productivity. And I've just been using it for a couple of days. You are gonna like this. It's called Day Night, and it is a procrastination killer. It shows you how much time is left for you to accomplish something as a percentage. And there's three views that it gives you. You can see the time left in a day as a percentage, or you can see the time left in a month as a percentage, or you can also see the time left in a year as a fraction. No, as a percentage. I just don't wanna keep saying it. My question is, why does this look so good? I mean, it's such a simple thing, but it has the design of something so premium. I mean, the designer could have made this so ugly and it still would have been useful, but it looks incredible and I like looking at it. Although I don't always like what it tells me. But seriously, seeing how much time I have left in the day to do something, it motivates me like nothing else. 
A to-do list app doesn't do it. A calendar doesn't do it. Pomodoro timer doesn't do it. This is such a simple mechanism and it works. Now, if you didn't notice, you click to see that nice pop-up bubble, but you can also just glance up and see a little number up in your menu bar. Now, this app does cost $5, yes, and there are some similar apps out there, but this is my favorite. All right, Chris, surely at this point, you've already run through all the really awesome apps and everything else is just gonna be filler, right? Wrong, we're just getting started. You're gonna love this next app. It's called Active Doc. Active Doc is an alternative to your default Mac Doc that while it lacks some of the animations and polish that I know you're gonna be used to, it does add some superpowers that you may not wanna do without after you get a taste. Now, Active Doc does several cool things. One of the best is giving you window placement options when you hover over an app down in the dock, which makes window management on your Mac not only ridiculously easy, but really powerful too. What, you want your browser to take up 75% of the screen and your notes app to take up 25%? All you gotta do is hover and it's done. Super convenient. Another thing that's really awesome is that it adds a couple of buttons over to the left. For starters, you get a start menu a start menu on your dock. And you also get a view desktop option, which is really great, super fast. I know there's other ways to do that, to view the desktop, different shortcuts, whatever. This works really good. You can also customize the appearance of certain icons down in that dock and even how the dock itself looks. So you can totally give your Mac experience an actual visual overhaul down in the Southern region. And really, if you wanna drop a couple bucks, I'd say it's worth just trying out because it's so different. Now, of course, there are lots of preferences, lots of settings you can mess around with. I'm not gonna cover them all here, but you are gonna to wanna to check that setting that lets you hide the official Apple dock so you're not using both at the same time. And yeah, you can still pin the dock to the sides of the screen or have it auto appear when you hover down in the Southern region. <laughs> but really, especially if you're trying to maximize your screen space using POC, it just makes sense. All right, what if I told you that while you're working at your Mac, right there next to it, you could have your iPhone acting as a second touch bar or a bank of shortcuts, so to speak. Well, that's pretty much what remote control for Mac is all about. So this app turns your iPhone or your iPad into a remote control for your Mac, which means it can act as a trackpad or a keyboard or launch any of your apps from anywhere within your home. So from controlling media playback and display brightness to seeing your Mac screen on your iOS device to accessing system and custom actions, this app does a lot. I mean, you can control airplay and where your music plays. You can use custom keyboards for popular apps and services like Netflix, YouTube, Plex, or Spotify, among others. And you can do advanced things like schedule an app to quit later on, and even access menu items within your Mac apps. There's more too, I just don't have the time to sit here and tell you all about it. Then people are really gonna complain. Chris, it's too long. Don't hit the back button, don't close the window, don't swipe away. Even though the next app is called Dozer, it's not something that you wanna sleep on. Dozer lets you hide any or all of your menu bar icons up in the top right corner of your Mac. Okay, grandparents, you know like the little icons with the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth and the time, all that stuff? Right up in there. If you're like me and you have a ton of apps up there, which you probably do if you've watched any of my previous Mac app videos, then Dozer isn't just gonna be cool, it's gonna be a necessity. How it works is really simple. When you install it, you're gonna see two dots up in that menu bar, and by holding down the command key, you can drag those around and reposition them. Basically, whatever you put in between those dots, you can hide by clicking the rightmost dot. Now, once you get the icons hidden that you want hidden, it just feels visually so much cleaner, way less clutter. It's a nice feeling, almost like a little bit of a weight has lifted off the shoulders. Maybe that's over dramatic. I just had too much coffee, maybe you can tell. But either way, everything that you want is still just one click away. And it's not just the dots that you can rearrange. You can also hold the command key down to rearrange any of those other icons up there, which is really cool because some things you just don't need to see all the time, and this really lets you choose exactly what you do wanna see. It's really one of the coolest apps on this list, and for the thrifty, yes, it's free. All right, picture this, you're at the coffee shop. You got your Mac, you got your iPhone, you got your AirPods, you got your backpack, you got your coffee, and then you drink the coffee and you get to work. And then a little bit later, the coffee kind of starts to hit and all of a sudden you gotta go. But what do you do? You don't wanna leave all your stuff there, pack it all up, and this guy or this person over here gonna come steal your good seat, right? Cause it's too packed. Do you chance it? Do you leave it there? Do you sneak off and hope nobody sees you? But you don't wanna do that because if you do, somebody might be waiting to actually steal your Mac. 
But there's another option, and it's called Beepify, and it gives you an alarm for your Mac for just these situations. Now, I'm not endorsing this product. I haven't even tried it. I'm just telling you that it exists. Also, I'm not telling you to go ahead and just leave your Mac there for everyone to think about stealing just because you gotta go to the bathroom. Either you gotta work on your bladder management or whatever, but I'm not telling you to do that just because you have an alarm. All I'm saying is technically you can put an alarm on your Mac. And there are some situations that maybe aren't as goofy as this one that we discussed where that might be useful. Once it's all set up though, there are three ways that someone can actually set off the alarm. One, your screen gets closed. Two, your charger gets unplugged. And three, you set it so that either of those things will trigger the alarm. Three modes. If your alarm does get triggered, then you're gonna get an alert on your phone letting you know, hey, your Mac might be getting stolen. And at that point, you're either gonna finish up whatever you're doing really quickly and get out and catch the thief, or everybody at the coffee shop is gonna be really angry with you because somebody just tripped over the cord and yanked it out, and now there's a blaring alarm happening. Now, this isn't free. It is a subscription. It's either nine bucks per month or $59 per year. I guess some people out there are finding it valuable enough to pay for. Either that or they're just drinking way too much coffee. Now, if you're somebody who watches Netflix on your Mac, what if you didn't have to watch it in a tab in your browser, but instead could just click a button down in the dock and launch it kind of like an app? Well, that's exactly what Clicker for Netflix does. So no more switching between tabs, which is great, but you also get picture-in-picture -picture support for multitasking, which why not? as well as native touch bar support, which includes a list of your recently watched shows. There's also a drop down menu for resuming your shows from anywhere, a really nice full screen mode, and several customization options, including the ability to auto skip a show's intro. Now, I usually watch Netflix on the TV, sometimes on the tablet, but if I did watch on the Mac, this is obviously the way to go. Yes, it does cost $5, but come on, it lets you prevent trailers from auto-playing, one of Netflix's most annoying things. This next app is for all you fellow Twitter users. It's called TweetFast, and I like it mainly for two reasons. Number one, it lets me tweet really fast. Number two, it helps me skip all the distractions that are contained in the Twitter timeline. I don't need to see that when I'm working. Personally, I really use Twitter mostly on my phone, probably like most people. I really just don't like browsing Twitter on the Mac. I usually end up using it just to send tweets. So as long as that's all I'm really doing there anyways, I might as well cut out the whole rest of Twitter, all those other people's tweets. Then when I do want to explore Twitter and interact with people, I can just do it on my phone. Just like you'd expect, this app is dead simple. There's a drop down, you type out a tweet, you send it, and you get back to doing whatever it is that you do. I love AirPods. I love them. And I already featured this next app in my recent AirPods tips video, which I'm gonna link up down below. I know I've been saying that a lot, but there's a lot of stuff down there if you haven't seen it already. If you haven't seen it, it's totally worth it. But I'm gonna mention this app here because it deserves to be on this list. It's Mac related, I love it, and you're gonna love it too. This app is called Tooth Fairy, and it just gives you a little button that you press in the menu bar to quickly connect your AirPods to your Mac. Super simple, super awesome. Like if you've been listening to something over on the iPhone or the iPad and you switch over to your Mac, this is gonna save you like a little bit more time because all you have to do is just click one button. Don't even have to mess with that Bluetooth menu. All right, so here we are at the end of the video and that means it's time for your surprise. The surprise I promised at the beginning of the video that everybody who already dropped out and quit watching this video is gonna miss. What does that mean? It means you've summited the Everest of this video and you're gonna get five additional bonus apps. Daily Wall automatically changes your Max wallpaper every day at 10 a.m. and no, it's nothing ugly. The backgrounds all come from a well-curated collection of beautiful photos. Countdown gives you a menu bar app that shows you how long it's gonna be to any of the important dates that you set. Birthdays, Valentine's, the next daily tech upload. You get it. SoundSource gives you incredible control over your Mac's audio, like the ability to control the volume and output devices for individual apps, among many other things. Progress Bar is a different take on letting you know just how much time you have left to get things done. What's crazy is that it goes past the day, past the month, past the year, and actually hits you with the real stuff how much time you might have left in your lifetime. Juice is the missing Bluetooth manager for Mac OS. It lets you connect all, 
It lets you connect and view all your Bluetooth devices with ease, and it works with the touch bar on your MacBook Pro. Well, that's about it for this video. I'm really interested which of these new apps is your favorite. I'll let you know what my favorite is down in the comments too. If I forget, then one of the first commenters can tell me. I'm always doing that, saying I'm gonna do it, and then I forget and you guys tell me, so just let me know. Don't forget you can follow at Daily Tech, spelled Daily T-E-K-K -K, on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.